Okay, so I'm always on the lookout for something that I can put into the Wi-Fi slot instead of the Wi-Fi card, you know, ways to expand the system. And I stumbled upon this guy on Amazon, and what it will do is add a, in essence, a mini SD slot reader port, whatever you want to call it, to your um, Elite Desk Pro Desk. And I happen to have a 128 gig uh, micro SD or mini SD, whatever, micro SD card, and thought I would give it a try with the setup. And I was curious, particularly to see, you know, what, what's the speed like? Um, can I boot from it? Can I install Windows 11 on it? And so I thought I'd use my um, G4 as our test bed. And one thing I want to do um, as a test later is to see if I can put this into, let's say, a G1 that's been modified to allow for booting from NVMe to see if it still works. Now, um, you'll probably want to see about getting the fastest you can find as far as SD, micro SD. This particular one, um, I, I don't think there's a huge difference in overall speed. I guess as long as it could handle, let's say, 4K video, maybe that might be enough. But, you know, you're still talking micro SD, so you're not going to get huge amounts of speed on this. So, with this particular card, there's really not whole lot of stuff you have to go through to get to work. It just basically kind of clicks in there, clicks out the same way. <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and install this. Uh, we'll boot up uh, normally. We'll show some speed tests and then I'll show you how to install Windows 11 on it because it is a little different than the norm. Okay, so let's uh, crack this one open. And there's nothing special about doing this on the, um, the G4. If you have a G3, you could do the same. Uh, just happened to have this set up. And I also, um, this particular one didn't have a Wi-Fi card, so it was just made a little easier. Pop this guy. So this is yet another way to add another drive to your system. You've probably seen um, videos on this channel showing how to do what I call sort of like the Wi-Fi hard drive, where it's an adapter that allows you to put in a uh, NVMe drive into the slot. This one's a little different. Um, one thing I like about this particular um, card, even though um, you'll see later, it's uh, you know it's not a, definitely not a speed demon, is that it will fit just about anywhere because it's the exact same size as a Wi-Fi card. So with the G4, there's always the challenge because of the orientation of the um, Wi-Fi slot. And what I mean by that is that on the uh, G3 and prior, uh, this particular is turned 90 degrees and so you can put a um, like a 2280 or 2230 going this way. With this, you notice it's going right here. It's, it's going to bump up. You, you know, no way are you going to put um, a... Uh, you might be able to... Well, let's see. On my videos, I believe what I ended up having to do is you get this um, kind of 90 degree turny thing. So it fits in here and then it goes 90 degrees and then you can put the adapter. It's a lot of work. It doesn't look very nice. So at least with this, you have something that, that will fit right in here. So let's remove the screw that happens to be there already. Uh, the, the kit does come with um, some screws as far as um, to be able to mount it in there. So bring this a little closer so you can kind of see. All nicely mounted. We'll put the uh, drive back in and we'll boot up. And these, you know, SD cards aren't that expensive. So, you know, you could get um, probably a uh, maybe a 250 uh, gig. I don't know, maybe 25 bucks. 
Um, add that with the adapter. This would be handy for cases where, let's say you wanted to um, make your own um, sort of internal standalone NAS. You could use the SD card as your boot up, let's say, into TrueNAS. And then, because this is a, a G4, it's got two SD slots still open. So, let's say you, if you, you know, want to invest and got two 2 gig SD cards, you could boot from the, the Wi-Fi card, get in there, and then be able to configure everything. And then, now you could have RAID, you could have, you know, RAID 1 uh, for mirroring, um, etc. And... Um, all self-contained and, you know, rel pretty fast because it's all uh, uh, NVMe, but you haven't wasted a slot using a more traditional uh, drive. Put this back on and we'll uh, boot into the system. So first I wanted to show you what, you know, kind of numbers you would get back um, running the Crystal Disk Mark on this particular um, micro SD card. So let's go ahead and run those. Well, that is pretty slow. That's probably a maybe a quarter of the speed of maybe a mechanical drive. But you'll see, um, in my testing, I was able to uh, boot into Windows 11 and um, you know actually do some stuff. So I'll show you once we go through the steps on how to uh, format and get uh, Windows 11 onto the system there. So what we'll need is two things. Uh, we'll need the latest version of Rufus, and we'll also need the latest um, ISO for uh, Windows 11. I went ahead and did the uh, 24H2. I'll include links on how to get both. We'll launch Rufus. and we'll select our ISO. It goes through some machinations and kind of looking at things. Okay, when it's done, what we want to do is image option. Now I tried installing or you know using Ventoy and various things and doing a normal Windows 11 install onto the SD card. It would go along and around 57% it just crashed and it would come up with errors I've never seen before. And I tried that numerous times, tried reformatting the uh, disk, um, it just didn't like it. Uh, I don't know if it's the fact that it sees it as a USB device perhaps, but um, so I went through everything. So the only thing that worked for me is I picked Windows to go. And that's something that uh, Rufus will set up for you. And then this is a way in which Windows gets installed onto a USB drive and is then bootable. Well, in our case, of course, the USB is going to be sort of internal, and uh, but it works the same way. So we'll say we'll do Windows to go. Um, it already kind of picks the fact that it's going to be on D. It already knows that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start and we'll let this run um, and we'll come back to it. Oh, I uh, lied. Uh, let's say what we want on here. In my case, I'm gonna go with the Windows 11 Pro because uh, I have a license for that. So I'm gonna say, okay. Uh, there's a couple choices here. Um, remove equipment, create a local account, regional options. Sometimes these are already turned on. I, For me, I just had them all off and, um, uh, and just went with it. Okay, warning, it's gonna blow it away. Okay, now we can leave it and come back to it. Be patient with it. You know, we are dealing with uh, slow media. Uh, it will take time, but it will move along. You, you may, you know, hit certain areas or parts in the process that may seem like it's hung up, but just uh, be patient and let it continue. So this is what it should look like when it finishes. What you want to do at this point, you can just hit uh, close 
And what I'm going to do is uh, take out the main uh, drive and um, see if we can boot up from this uh, SD card. Okay, so I um, took out the SSD and now it's booting from the um, SD card. Uh, well, I, my memory, ser if memory serves me, um, the last time I tried this takes a while for everything because you know we're we're talking a pretty slow drive. So, but what's kind of encouraging is the fact that I didn't have to do anything special. I, I just took the other drive out and it booted in. It didn't go, hey, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. And but it it found it and started booting from it. You'll see this starting services. I think it stays on this for a while. Oh, I guess not. Okay, getting <laughs> getting devices ready. Oh, that's pretty fast. 100%. Okay, maybe it's going to boot in. Well, it's been at this uh, getting ready for, oh, I don't know, maybe at least uh, 10 minutes now. So we'll see how much longer this goes. Okay, well, we've progressed to the just a moment. So maybe... <laughs> Maybe we're getting close now. So I know this looks like you're doing an install, but really it's more, I guess, a configuration. Because you don't do the normal kinds of install, you still have to run through this part, um, asking about information uh, as far as you know, keyboard, all that kind of stuff, um, your Microsoft account. I think you can bypass it if on Rufus there's a that one check mark. I'm one of those weird people that seems to like having uh, it connected to Microsoft account, but that's also mainly because then there's sort of consistency in the look uh, when I'm doing my uh, various installs and such. But we would just run through this. Um, let's see, so, you know, just the usual, uh, and it's getting things ready. And hopefully this, oh, I think there's probably gonna be those questions like, hey, do I want Microsoft 365? Do I want the uh, gaming pack? All that kind of stuff. So that should probably be coming up. Yep, just like I thought. Okay, we'll skip. One thing I should note is that it's actually pretty zippy as it's going through. It's, it's actually not that bad. Um, you know, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're walking through molasses or something. And we are in. One thing that I noticed is that this kept coming up every time that I would boot and I would play with the paging file. I do all these things. Um, I, I'm just going to say, okay, uh, it does come up with here. Um, whether I set the paging file or not, it does. It, seems to always come up when I reboot. So I'm, I'm going to just cancel. Um, let's look, let's try a couple things just to see kind of, uh, you know, what our response time looks like. So I just clicked on the menu and it's still, <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to, I don't know if it's thinking. Let's see. No? Okay, it must still be thinking because I can't right click. Okay, there it is. Okay, okay, then the right click came up. Okay, so kind of goes into the um, the buffer a little bit there. Yeah, I mean, um, let's, let's try launching Microsoft Edge. Start browsing. Interesting. Well, here it is. I mean, um, it's it's Windows. I mean, uh, it'd be enough to, um, let's see if I click on, go into the uh, file browser, file explorer. Again, a little slow. Okay. All right, there's my piece, there's my drive. So there it is. I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, shut down, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna stick it into a ProDesk G1 
that has had the um, BIOS mod that allows it to boot from an NVMe drive. And let's see if that comes up in that particular unit. So here we are in Windows in on the G1. Um, I just had to change the resolution because um, I, it's using a VGA adapter, and, and but I was able to get, you know, 1920 uh, by, was it 1080 or whatever it is. Um, you know, it's it, it, it comes up and uh, it might be handy for cases with the G1 where maybe you don't want to have to put in, you know, take out the the drive and the heat sink and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, the drive, the fan and the heat sink just to be able to get to the drive where this, you could just put it right into the Wi-Fi slot and be able to boot and, you know, you're right in there and ready to go. So uh, another, another use for it. Um, let's see, I think, you know, probably performance is akin to what we saw on the G4. Um, I just tried hitting Oh, there we go. Not, not bad. Uh, I had tried the right um, click, but didn't seem to come up. So, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a you know maybe a niche um, usage of uh, an SD card. Uh, but you know, you if you want uh, if you really like having lots of drives, um, you could have four drives on your um, a G4. Uh, you could have the main SSD, you could have maybe a 2230 underneath it, a 2280, and also have this uh, SD. So that might be, yeah, that's probably even more than uh, you doing the, the Wi-Fi uh, hard disk trick. 